a savings account won't get you to financial freedom, but investing most certainly will. All right, guys, thanks for clicking on my video. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this. If you're not a current subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button because you're gonna like this video and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. All right, so recently I've been talking a lot about checking accounts and savings accounts, um, partially because there have been some new checking accounts that have been coming out. So make sure you check my videos talking about those, but also your checking account and your savings account is the base of where your money is going. So when you get paid, you're either sending that money to a checking account or a savings account. Hopefully you're not out there getting payday loans and cashing your checks at a check cashing place. It's best if you can direct deposit your money into a bank account and then that creates the base of your financial life and your budget. And then from there, you wanna do different things to help your money grow. So although a checking account and a savings account is the base, it's not the place where you wanna hold the majority of your money. So your checking account, it's not meant to hold a large sum of money. You use your checking account to pay your bills. You can use it to transfer money to other accounts where you're gonna hold your money. And that's pretty much all the checking account is really made for. Now your savings account, it's made for holding money that you wanna access on a short-term basis. So you're not gonna have a lot of transactions in this account and you wanna hold, at the very minimum, you wanna have $1,000 as an emergency fund. Then you wanna build that up to two or three months of an emergency fund. And then there's some really extreme people out there that like to have six months or maybe even a year worth of money held in their savings account. Personally, I'm not a big fan of holding a large sum of money in a checking or a savings account. I recommend just having the thousand dollars in your savings and this video will go into more talking about why that is now let's talk about how money deteriorates over time when it's sitting in a checking or a savings account the only growth that you can get from that is whatever interest rate your bank is providing you and so that can range from if it's a large bank or the average bank less than 0.1 percent interest or like I mentioned in some of my recent videos, uh, T-Mobile Money just released a checking account that where you can get 4%. Uh, some of the top online banks where you don't have to jump through a lot of hoops and there are no fees, they're usually around 2% right now. And that's probably the best that you're gonna get without jumping through any hoops. Now, if you look at the economy and how inflation works, at least in the United States, inflation is usually two to 3% per year. So with inflation, that means that the value of your money or what your money can buy loses value by two to 3% every year. So that means something that you bought this year for a dollar, next year your dollar will be basically worth 97 to 98 cents in order to purchase the exact same product. Or that product is not gonna cost you a dollar and two cents or a dollar and three cents is another way that you can think about it. So if your checking or your savings account isn't at least getting you two to 3% interest every year, that means any money that you have sitting in a checking or savings account is actually losing value. Now you look at it and you're like, oh, you know, I put $100, I put $1,000 in this account and I still have that amount at the end of the year, but the number of value is still the same, but the value that it can purchase has reduced in value because of inflation. So that's why it's really important that no matter what income level you're at, no matter how much money you can put towards investing, it's really important that you invest your money. Now, if you put your money into an investment account or a brokerage account, it's another word that is used for this type of account. You then want to buy stocks or bonds or index funds, ETFs, and the index funds and ETFs are a form of investment that holds stocks or it holds bonds. Since its inception, depending on whose figures you look at, it can gain anywhere from 5% up to 12% a year on average. Now, over the past 30 years, the S&P 500 
has gained over 8% average. And so that's really good. If you think about the working life of the average adult, um, many adults start working after 18 or they really start getting into either their what we call their real money or their real job in their mid to late 20s, maybe early 30s. And if you go by the typical retirement age, you're going to be working until you're in your 60s. And so that's at least 30 years to where you could have been gaining an average of 8% in the stock market. But if you're a person that's afraid to invest, you have a fear of something bad happening and you losing out on money in the stock market, then you're not going to invest your money and you're going to hold it to a savings account that may not even get you 3%, depending on what bank you use. And if you have a large sum of money, there are some savings accounts that have limits to the amount of interest that you can gain up to a certain level of dollars. So recently I, I made a video about T-Mobile just because they recently announced that they have a checking account. And this is an example of a bank account that has its limits. So one, you have to be a T-Mobile customer, but two, the max you can put in for their 4% interest rate is $3,000. Anything over that $3,000, it will only gain a 1% interest rate. Now, I also made a video about the top five savings accounts, which allow you to put in an unlimited number of funds. And there are also no fees, no hoops to jump through, but they're getting you right at this moment, just above 2%. So it's right there around the line of what inflation is in the US. And so putting into it a savings account or a checking account, specifically savings accounts, because on average, you'll get more interest within a savings account versus a checking account. All of it's doing is keeping you right in line with inflation. So your savings account could help you not lose its value over time, but then that means it's not growing. So you've avoided losing the value by having that savings account, but all you did was break even. So in order to do more than break even, you need to invest your money. And there are many investment accounts out there, especially nowadays, there are a lot of accounts that you can buy stocks and they don't even charge you a fee to get in it. And there are some accounts that actually let you buy partial shares of a stock. So if you wanted to get in a high price stock like an Amazon, that's over $1,800 per share, you know, you can put in as little as $10, you own a piece of Amazon. So if Amazon stock gains 20% over the next year, even though you only have $10, you also gain 20% because Amazon stock has gained 20%. And so your $10 has grown into $12 by getting that 20% return versus if you had in a savings account that's getting a 2% return, that $10 only gains you 20 cents. So that's the big difference of potential gains that you can get in the stock market versus putting your money in a savings account. So of course, I'll have to address many people's fears about investing in the stock market. One, of course, just knowing what to do, where to put your money once you actually do invest, what type of account to open up. So make sure you check out my videos talking about those types of accounts. But the biggest thing is to just get in the market. And the easiest way to do so is to buy a total stock market index fund or ETF. And with a total stock market ETF, for example, if you're starting with a low amount of money, you can buy a piece of every publicly owned company in the US. So that means that in order for you to lose money long term in the stock market, of course, if you put money in today, the stock market could go down 2% tomorrow. In the about 100 year history, the worst one day drop was around 25% in one day. And that was in the late 1980s. Now, the biggest overall drop was, of course, uh, the Great Depression back in the 20s. And then the most recent big drop was in 2008, 2009. But if you look at historical charts of the stock market, you see that there have been many ups and downs. Uh, you know, I mentioned the two largest or the three largest events within the past almost 100 years. And over time, the stock market has passed over all of those drops. So just in the past 10 years, after the stock market dropped 50% in 2008, 2009, it has not only gained all of that back, now it has passed the high points that it had in the year 2008. And so anyone that, let's say they invested right at the tip top of the market in 2008, if they held onto their money and didn't sell, the stocks that they purchased back then, assuming they purchased a total stock market ETF, 
You know, it may not be the same for an individual stock, depending on what stock you purchase, but the stock market as a whole is at a higher point now than it was 10 years ago. So you wouldn't have lost any money if you just held on and didn't sell. So this was just a video to talk about the importance of not just saving money, but also investing in the stock market. And of course, doing it wisely as far as what you're going to put your money in, what's going to be the lowest risk would be a total stock market ETF, because in order for the total stock market ETF or index fund to lose money or to go to zero more specifically, the entire US economy would have to go to zero which means that if that happens, you have a lot more things to worry about than just what, you know, what your money is in, in the stock market. There's going to be a lot more issues going on and you won't be worrying about that. All right. Thanks for taking the time out to watch this video. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day because you really could be doing anything with your time. Uh, make sure if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and hit that like button because you really like this video and hit that notification bell. If you're already a subscriber, Thanks for being a subscriber. All right. Thanks again for watching this video. You guys have a great day. Thanks.